two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, ten. Okay. We are going to go ahead and begin. It's 829. Is everybody okay with that? <laughs> okay. Let's get this thing going. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start. Tony Deluzio is here with us today uh, via Zoom. We are recording both the meeting here now and um, also Tony is recording it. I would just ask everyone to make sure when you talk into the mic, even though it feels like you're swallowing it, talk closely to it because Tony needs to be able to hear us um, on his recording and I think that that was the best way to, to do that. So I guess that will do it for me and I'll turn it over to Tony. Larry, can we do a quick roll call so uh, I can take attendance and, and folks in the recording that aren't here will know who was in the room? Yes, you want me to just go through? We have Kim Hallquist, Phil yeah. Sherman, Bruce Hudson, Parsons. excuse me, I'm sorry, Bruce Parsons, Bruce. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Hollinger, Adam Ricker, David Keith, Ashley Siebold, Annie Beck, myself, Malika uh, Sidmore, Susan Warren, and Jim Casey. Excellent. So everybody's here. Great. Thank you. So typically what I do is just start with the meeting minutes that I sent out uh, earlier. That becomes our agenda so that we cover old business and then any new business that comes up. Most of the items that we addressed in our first meeting will get covered under the old business. Uh, and then if there's any new uh, action items or any items that anybody wants to bring up, we can cover that in new business. Um, so the items that were kind of informationally or listed as closed in your meeting minutes, they get issued once as closed, and they'll go away in this week's meeting. Uh, this is our first meeting uh, as agreed on the third Thursday, or third Friday of the month, May 17th. Every other week, I think we agreed. Um, I have another one that's every other Thursday or third Thursday. Anyways, uh, 8.30 in the morning on May 17th. Thank you all for joining. Um, availability for future meetings. So yes, uh, first and third Friday of each month. There it is. I should read my own minutes, huh? Uh, thank you. So I'll, I'll close that for this week and we will continue on on that schedule unless we need to adjust for any reason. Uh, thoughts on communications and considering considerations uh, through the, the citizens. Uh, Kim did send me an email this morning with Will Kidder, uh, who I think is there and helping you folks out. So we will record the meetings that we have. Uh, we'll figure out a way to get those to Will so that they get posted. I will also add Will to the transcribe of the meeting minutes. So whoever's kind of taking care of posting these things moving forward, uh, we can get both of those documents taken care of. Next topic, uh, major topic, was studies, findings, and, and how we got to where we were. Uh, we talked a bit about the Harriman report and the Myers report. Uh, I'm guessing you all have had a chance to look through those documents. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to start with comments or concerns on the Harriman report, likes, dislikes, anything that we should address that may have been inconsistent or may have changed. We want to take the information uh, that the old reports gave us and kind of move it forward. So if there's anything glaring in that Harriman report that we need to address or need to move off of even, you know, now's the time to kind of talk about the Harriman report. I think it, it might be useful for the committee to be aware of how the Harriman report and I, I can't hear you. 
it might be useful for the committee to understand how the Harriman report and the 2020 Myers report fit together. What the Harriman report did not study was what would fit in the, in the Bucher building. So the 2020 Myers exercise, which I was the chair of with uh, Chief Cobb, um, filled in that gap of what would fit in the, in the uh, Bucher building with or without a small addition. Okay, thank you. Uh, and how about the Myers report? Anybody have questions, concerns, comments on Myers? Well, again, just to, uh, to get the committee uh, organized on a couple of high points, in that Myers report on page 11, you'll see a list of what's called what we don't get. Um, and the, the conclusion of that Myers report was that most all of what the PD identified as necessary space would fit in the Bucher building, perhaps with a small addition. Um, and it also provides solutions for the things that would not fit, uh, notably an evidence vehicle. Also on page B6, appendix B, like in boy six, is the tabulation of space that the PD identified versus what the architect fit in the building. So I think when we, when we talk as we get into this thing about what the space needs are, it's critical to remember that those were the space needs that were identified by the PD uh, and then incorporated into the analysis. Thank you. In our last meeting, Phil advised the town has spent a uh, million dollars or more on the existing building, and, and that would need to be captured in the updated report. Uh, certainly, when we get the appropriate consultants on board, we need to relook at you know what maintenance, what repairs has have been done since those previous reports what those systems uh, life expectancies and operating efficiencies are uh, moving forward and, and, and update that information. So uh, uh, we did include that in the RFP that was, that was issued and it is intended to be updated in the current scope uh, should we select a designer moving forward. So we'll leave that one as an open item. It was asked and, and determined that this this advisory committee uh, is not being asked to consider uh, secondary uses of the space of the police station if if the decision was made that they're moving out into a new building that would be years down the road and so I close that item as it's not something that this group needs to be concerned with moving forward at least at this time. A year and a half from now, if we're building a brand new building, that may change. Um, but we'll close that one for now and uh, address it later if need be. Next major topic is site considerations. Uh, over the past several months, we've put together a site matrix, looked at the matrix. Uh, in our last meeting, we, we talked about how those uh, prospective sites were ranked, the physical characteristics uh, that make up the sites. Uh, we had ranked three sites, uh, I believe one of which now is no longer available, so kind of need to relook at that if we are to bring on a design team and ask them to do some test fit, test sketches of which of those sites might be most conducive. Uh, but we certainly wanted this board, this committee uh, work group to come up to speed on what that matrix was showing and, and how the weighting and hierarchy was derived. Um, any further questions or discussions on the site matrix? Tony, I just have a question. This is Emily. <clears throat> yes. 
if if the determination is made that the, the um, it should be renovated and we should stay in our current space, will the cost to move us out of our space while it's being renovated be included in that and a consideration that the architecture firm and yourself would make sure is uh, available, I suppose, because we can't yes. live through and, and continue to operate in our space, I would think, a major renovation like that. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. As we started to build that budget, you know, with the design team and look at the study phase of what that would entail, a um, couple of things. We'd look at where your operations would go, that type of space, and then how would we deal regionally with the communication center. Um, states typically have mobile command centers for emergency operations throughout the state. I don't know that they would be able to loan you one. You know, they're, they're really meant for short-term emergencies. Right. Right. Uh, I, I don't think they can give you one for, you know, a year or 14 months right. uh, for that type of long-term process. I had a couple of things on, on the site. Uh, first, in the minutes on point uh, 1.2, it's main, M-A-I-N, not main like the state. And it's the Newport Road corridor, not the Newport corridor. Uh, but on the matrix, I, I just want to point out that when we did the study of Bucher, the police department identified a total of 12 parking spaces that were necessary. That was incoming shifts and outgoing shifts and everybody else that, that went into the mix. When the site selection committee was formed, that morphed into 40 parking spaces. And that effectively had the effect of eliminating all the spots on Main Street. Uh, it pushed us out of Main Street on a Newport Road. And as I said last time, uh, if the government leaves Main Street, everybody else does too. Uh, anyone else on site? Uh, item 1.3, the group discussed the limitations of the existing footprint. Uh, Chief Cobb gave tours after our last meeting, so I can close that item unless uh, anybody has questions regarding the tour of the existing space. I've given tours to every member of the committee. They've been able to come through. You're closing, you. the, uh, closing the discussion of the space or closing the discussion of the tours? Well, I, I, I didn't hear you, Jim. I fell, sorry. Are, are you closing the discussion of the tours or closing the discussion of the existing space? I'm closing item 1.3. We've discussed the limitations of it. The next phase of the study will further detail and illuminate, you know, changes things from the previous two studies to where we are today. So just as a conversational item over site, which is where this item resides, it will be closed. It's not that I'm closing limitations of the building. That's certainly... Uh, going to become a main topic of this process but as far as the building footprint limitation we're not going to expand into the road we're not taking properties or we haven't discussed you know how we would go about expanding the site so that we could enlarge the footprint does that make sense and i think discussing the limitations of the building is it's important to make sure we talk about what's outside the building as well. Our shared driveway, the fact that we need to um, sometimes jockey for position to get in and out of our own driveway, the parking around it, which Phil has already touched upon, um, and just the, the overall layout of the building. So just want to make sure that the, when we say building, we're talking about the site itself. And like you just mentioned, Tony, the ability to expand any which way we are limited on. Uh, 
Jim Casey had asked about uh, project budget expectations, and I did send out the high-low probable budget that we had put together uh, very early on in the process. We, we, we know far less about the project uh, document was created just based off historical data of recent projects in communities of similar size with police and regional communication centers of similar size. So that kind of gave us a ballpark of three very varying options that we might fall somewhere within that. So it's, it's setting an early benchmark that we don't expect to be well below that. We don't expect to be well above any of those numbers, but certainly there's 30 or 40 items in there that all need to be evaluated and, and discussed at a much deeper level before we're able to hone in on an actual number. But it should give you all an idea of the types of items that go into these projects and what your peer groups of similar projects, similar community size are spending or have spent over the past two to three years. It'll change a bit because we were spending drastically more during COVID and we're hoping that everything settles out at this point and maybe rolls back a little bit, but we're not seeing a rollback right now. Um, but it's a good shot and it opens up a lot of questions in the budget if anybody has any. Tony, this is Ashley. I Just going back to Chief Cobb's statement, if we were to rehab the facility that we have now is baked into these high and low numbers, us relocating our current police station somewhere else for 12 to 14 months. That feels like a pretty big cost that I would want to make sure is a line item. I don't recall offhand if there is a dollar amount there. If anybody has it in front of them or I can pull it up, there is a line item in there for temporary uh, space and temporary relocation somewhere down near the bottom. Okay. There's a cat, but I, I, I can't recall whether I put money in there for that or not. That doesn't look like it is in there. However, it was in the, uh, in the Bucher exercise that was included there. Okay. It is. It's in section B10, mm -hmm. temporary space operations, but there's no cost. Yeah, there's no cost. It. I, I would also just note and, and understanding this is a highly preliminary thing but that the square footage dollar figures are a fraction of what the city of Concord is spending on their station very different building but they're renovating part of it and adding on new and for the new construction portion of it there's almost double some of these estimates here uh, and secondly I, I don't know where the 14,500 square feet came from uh, the existing station has something like 9,300 square feet available. When we looked at Stallman, uh, that, that included an addition that was designed to fit what the PD thought was necessary. That equated to approximately the same size. And everybody right along has been talking about 10,000 square feet. So why we've got a 45% increase on that, I don't know. And, and, and these are, are good points and reviews and that's really what these documents are meant to do at this point start that conversation get people thinking about the discrepancies or the issues or the things that we need to uh, vet out better right and, and that's really the process of bringing the designer on board and going back through what are the space requirements? Some of the spatial requirements, some of your common spaces that are afforded to the police department in its current location. You're, we'll end up talking about net to gross space and common space, net to gross square footage calculations. Uh, those things will all change. As I said, I looked at police 
departments and regional communication project pro project buildings that are of similar size, similar square foot, similar um, staffing, similar call numbers to what you are experiencing. Looked at Meyer's report, looked at Harriman report, and tried to evaluate where I think the square footage is going to be. If it comes down to 10,000, that's great. Savings is savings, and square footage is the best place to pick up those savings. But again, it's these documents were generated to start those communications and, and further them as we move along. So thank you. Um, moving into existing facilities. So that was all coming out of kind of site. And now we're moving into the building, right? The, the existing facility conditions. Um, I think we talked a little bit about the reports, PC, PFAC members to review the reports and tour the facility. So I think we can close item 1.1 of that item. Does the town have any liability to the other five communities? I, I don't know that that's something that this group needs to leave on the meeting minutes. I'm certainly happy to leave it or we can close it. Hearing none, I'll close it. Um, can other communities, item 1.3, can other communities be asked to help? Uh, could they be assessed to help offset the cost? Happy to leave this on there if it's something you want to consider moving forward. Um, really not part of the agreement between the communities as explained by Chief Cobb. Uh, I will leave it up to you all whether this should be closed or not. Uh, I would move to close that. I don't think it's appropriate to ask other communities for that. I can't hear you. I would move to close it. I don't think okay. it's... I don't, you want to leave it? Yeah. We'll leave it open. Close it. Oh, close it? Yes. Okay. Gotta get those mics really close, I guess. Tony, we have right. a question from someone who is here watching the meeting. A public comment. Okay. In the comment. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Uh, Colin Beasley. Colin Beasley. Uh, I'm a resident. I, I disagree with uh, Lieutenant Keith on closing that issue. I think it's appropriate that we exercise all the economic opportunities, and that conversation may prove to be uh, related to closing it, but we should have that conversation with the towns. It's the percent of the space that the communication center represents is not immaterial, uh, and we're going to be incurring those capital dollars, and the taxpayer should be understanding whether or not the towns have been approached to share those costs and if they haven't why and if they choose not to why what and it could be the implication of uh, the cost sharing model becomes onerous to them but we should appreciate what that variable is one person's opinion yeah i actually agree to keep it open i don't know if it's going to be a massive point for us but i think it is worth exploring as we continue down this path of what are the costs is there an opportunity to share um again do i think it's going to be huge no do i think it's going to stop the entire project if we don't no but i do think it's interesting to just keep it open and see if there's an opportunity fair enough um, can I just get that gentleman's name again? I know it's in the recording, but I want to put it in the notes. It's Colin Beasley. Colin Beasley. Thank you. And I guess why don't we just keep it open for now? Unless anyone has any okay. other comment. At what point, Tony, would 
the, I feel like it's going to be later, but at what point would we have that conversation with those other towns? Probably much later in the process, once we know if we're going to stay or go or what it, precisely we're doing. And I guess is the idea that the worst they could say is, no, we're not going to help contribute to the new facility, whatever that might look like. Okay. Yeah, I think how I've seen it addressed, most of the projects in Massachusetts has really just been moving to regional comm centers. We, we all had our 351 communities. Everybody had their own E911. Uh, and, and we were not, I guess, up to speed as some other communities and states. A lot of those discussions are happening in the negotiations and the uh, mutual agreements at the early stage. So I would say if there's language in your current agreement to provide those services, you know, it goes in a staffing space, communications, equipment upgrades. Uh, we should look at how all those are being handled within your agreements to provide service and, and how any of those items are paid for. Uh, we can, you can always start the conversations earlier. We, we don't know what the number is. We don't know what the prorated share might be, uh, but you'll certainly get a sense of any cooperation or none at all, right? That's just good information for me to know as I speak to the other member communities of the dispatch center. If, I, if conversation leads that way, if I kind of lay that foundation, at what point do I do that? Because I don't want to drop that on any community at, at any point, so. Good to know. Okay. And that leads us to our previous conversation of designer selection. Um, so as discussed, we went through an RFQ process, reached out to a bunch of folks, uh, put this out for everybody and anybody to respond to um, and distributed those. Uh, Kim got those to all of you for review and comment. Um, the only one I've really heard back from uh, since the 3rd of May was Phil. And uh, I'll open it up to the, to the committee here if you want to discuss designer selection responses of any firms or how we intend to move forward. So perhaps I could explain my concerns, which I forwarded to you and Kim. Uh, I, I have concerns at two level. First is the request for proposal, and the second is the choice of the architects that were on the list. So on the RFP, this went out in December. Um, and not having been to every selectman's meeting, there was a shift in scope for this committee from don't worry about the existing building to putting the existing building back on the table. I hope I'm not putting words in anybody's mouth. Uh, this RFP doesn't reflect that. It sort of says, well, look at the existing building, but then give us three options for a, another site. So I think at a, at a base level, if we're going to keep this thing as, a, as an analytical exercise, the RFP has to be adjusted to require a look, you know, a one option that says, here's what you get at the existing building. Uh, so that's on the RFP side. On the choice of architects, uh, this of course consisted of Harriman who did the first study, Myers who did an early, early study, and then the second main study, and Lavallee Brenziger who as far as I know hasn't worked uh, on this project. Um, Myers, uh, I, I again was the chair uh, that he, he was involved on that committee. Um, I would not recommend that we hire him again. Uh, there may be others in the room who want to speak to that as well. Uh, I don't think that he um, was the best choice looking back for that. He just was not cut out to work with that kind of a project. Um, Harriman, I think, comes with baggage, quite honestly. Uh, the reason we had to hire Myers was that the Harriman report didn't include 
one of the one of the focal points of the whole exercise was what happens if we stay where we are. And Lavallee Brenziger is an honorable firm. I've worked with them in my professional career. I have no problems with them at all. However, that really gives us one independent architect that we've talked to. Uh, secondly, I asked Tony to send me the list of architects that he spoke to who said they were too busy. That was a sum total of three architecture firms, and all of them are in southern New England. So I went back and I said, what's going on here? In 20, I guess it was 2020, when we hired Myers, we came up with a list of 18 architects, most all of which were, were northern New England, uh, which I forwarded to Tony and, and Kim. Uh, two of those architects, uh, only because I've worked with them professionally and I know the people involved, Banwell out of Lebanon and Warren Street out of Concord are well reputed in the area. They're very active and they both have experience with PDs. I can't remember which one. One of them is finishing up the Wolfboro Police Department as we speak. Um, so I think this whole thing is on weak legs the way it stands. I, I think we've not gone out to the proper architects, and I don't think we've gone out to enough architects to understand what's really going on. And I did not speak with either one of those about timing or even what the scope of the exercise was other than that it was a study. Uh, so I'll leave it to, for that and can you know offer anything else if people have questions. So are you um, think, thinking that we should redo the RFP at this point and open it back up? And if so, I guess, Tony, maybe you could speak to what that looks like for timeline or uh, cost, I guess. So maybe the first part of that is to fill in the second part, perhaps, to Tony. I'm absolutely suggesting we reopen it and that we look at it um, from the basis of the projects as it stands now, not the way the project stood in December. It wouldn't take much for Lavalle Brenziger to redo their proposal. That's not a, a massive exercise. But. Phil, when you say Harriman comes with baggage, can you elaborate on that for me? When you read the Harriman report, it's pretty clear that either they missed the whole idea or they were told to miss the whole idea. They summarize in a very brief manner, well, the existing building doesn't work. Let's get on to the other options. That's my reading of things. And maybe I'm putting it too harshly. Um, the selectmen in Colin, do you remember when we did that, that report? I guess it was 2019, 2020. That board of selectmen agreed fully and paid money to hire another architect to fill in the gaps for that. Now that may have been a shift between boards of selectmen's intent or it may have been a focal point of Harriman that didn't, didn't get all the options on the table, but it clearly did not address the existing building and what could be done there. That's why we had a whole nother study at some expense to the town and lots of meetings. <laughs> Say being, yes, uh, uh, being new to this being new to this committee, uh, is there a reason we went out to the architects that we chose and and actually didn't go out to additional architects? So we we opened up the process to anyone in the area. Um, I, I I don't know of every architect throughout. Uh, all of New England and, and others that may be out there. Um, there are firms that specialize in not two or three police stations regionally. Um, Doran Whittier has three offices, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. They've been specializing in police and fire station projects for over 30 years. Similarly with Castle Booze, um, Tecton and Jakunski Humes, are firms that specialize in police and fire because their principals have come out of Castle Booze and Doran Whittier and went on to other firms. Uh, they are firms that are most represented at all of the New England regional police, fire, public safety trade shows as architects who have long and lengthy histories of this building type. 
that's where that list gets generated from. That's not to say there isn't an architect somewhere who's done a, another public safety or a police station. They're certainly out there. Um, the firms that we tend to invite to these types of projects are firms who have been through the IACP, International Police uh, Conference, best practices, standards in design and construction of public safety and police facilities, training programs. Uh, I know them to be up to date on the latest in detentions, in holding cells, in processing, and those best practices and guidelines. Uh, as firms that are most experienced in this type of work. Um, Kalo Beanick being another one. Um, we did review all this with the select board. No, there was not you know, this type of advisory group uh, working with us, but the RFP, the development of that RFP, the inclusion of reassessment of the existing facility, the existing site, and the three kind of test fits that were considered was acceptable to the select board before we went out and issued that document. The responses came back. We've looked at those. This group was pulled together to review those. Um, and, and that's kind of where we are. It wasn't done to slight any particular architect uh, or not include anyone. Um, and I'm certainly happy to open it up to anybody and everybody uh, that, that is recommended by anyone. I guess the, the cautionary tale of that is it is an extremely busy uh, economy right now. Architects, contractors, you know, while we all talk about how high the prices are going and costs of inflation and difficulty in getting materials, many of the architects who specialize in this are extremely busy. There is a ton of work out there. And now we're, we're trying to look for architects who specialize in a certain sector of work. We're narrowing that focus even more. Second part of that question or, or concern is that while it may not seem like a heavy lift, architectural firms that are chasing multiple projects, it does take time. It takes staff. They put together qualifications. Um, you may, in fact, put this back out again. And whether we like Harriman or not, or we like Myers, or we like LaValle or not, they may choose just to say, this is a community, a project that's been out there for years and years and years, and it's never going to happen. And we're just not interested in chasing our tail and we're, we're not going to submit. So you do run that risk when projects go on and on with multiple studies, multiple years, um, you lose the confidence that this is a project that's actually got legs and a designer or in fact an OPM want to chase because we chase it, we win it, and it never goes anywhere. It's really not a lucrative project. Um, lastly, to Chief Cobb's point of where are we, by reopening this process, um, Colliers was hired several months back to put together a schedule of how to get us to, from A to B or A to Z, and, and we put that together. We are now already several months behind the schedule, and that's perfectly fine. It's your schedule. It's your project. It's your process. Colliers is here to kind of help guide that process. If we want to go back and restart that process, we can certainly do that. And we support you in getting the best designer for the project that we can. However, there is, in fact, time. So there's probably six weeks to redo the RFP, get you folks to review, get everybody on board with the revisions that we would need to make, a couple of weeks to put it out to folks, a couple of weeks for the designers to prepare responses and proposals, come back to a meeting of this board, look at those proposals again. You know, there's, there's probably a six-week to eight-week process 
in a designer selection process. The follow-on piece to that that is contractually, we're now behind, we are redoing work, there is a cost to the town for colliers to re-engage in those services. So sitting here today, summarizing, if we reopen the designer selection process, it's probably a six to eight week process, and it's somewhere eight to nine thousand dollars of services that would be needed to re redo that part of the process. Tony, this is Ashley. I read through the yes. proposals. Um, I think they're I think they're fine. Um, you know, obviously, I don't have the context as Phil does. You know, after reading them, I said to myself, I, I need. I would like to talk to these people. I'd love to invite all three in for us to have some interviews with and actually talk through what is, if there is a differential between what they submitted and what the actual scope is now. Like, talk through here. Here is our scope, and actually have some conversations with them and and really interview them. Um, it's hard for me to to read three different proposals and then come out saying, oh, it's definitely option A. Um, I'm just more of a let's talk. I, I'd love to love to hear from them and talk to them directly. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way. I agree fully. Um, however, I think the lesson that I learned on the 2020 exercise was that they all give great presentations. What really matters is talking to the people that they worked for on the last project because there are architects that are probably great at design. They disappear into their cubicles and poof comes a design. There are other architects that are better at working with committees, working with the variable uh, issues on, on the table in this, which are pretty messy, right? Um, and I think that's where we found uh, in that exercise that there, there was a, a, not a sufficient level of capability there. Uh, but I also think that um, one of the reasons we're here <laughs> is a dissatisfaction with those two earlier reports, and I go back to the same people who wrote them again, is just spinning our wheels. I, I just, it's nuts to me. Yeah. I, I do think that some of those questions, though, are great questions for us to use in interviews. Of you know, Talk to us a little bit about uh, projects that you might have worked with, committees, um, things of that nature. I, I still don't have any sort of stance of, you know, these two who we've previously worked with, we shouldn't interview or have conversations with. Um, I think a lot of that gets flushed out in these conversations. And then perhaps we have those three conversations and we come out of it saying, actually, no, these, these two really won't work or no, all three won't. It's hard for me to say, hey, let's spend additional money and put this project back right now without having any conversations with them. I also wonder, does, Emily, have you had any discussions with the police chiefs of the towns that Collier, uh, I'm sorry, Myers or Harriman have built for before? No, not yet. So maybe that's, maybe a field trip? Now chief, one of the towns that Dennis Myers designed was Sunapee, and I'm sure you've had discussions off and on with the chief there. So. <laughs> I have a contact there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I would also ask, well, we, uh, we toured, add that. Uh, we I'm toured, the, I'm sorry, Phil, we did tour Sunapee as part of, I don't remember which committee it was. Okay, thank you. Um, and there were some things that they talked about in that one, but yes, okay, sorry, go ahead. Uh, the other architect that I tried to chase, and I, I either called the DPW or the selectman in Tilton, and I can't remember which, they bounced me to the police chief, and I never got a call back. Uh, but Tilton also is a similar sized town with somewhat of a similar kind of, of uh, demographics, if you will, a school and an interstate and so forth. Uh, they just built a new police station within the last several years. It's some, somebody Goodrow, but I, I've got the name in my, in my paper. I've toured that one. Yeah. Yes. The, and their, their chief has been, I think they've had some transition points, Tilton, recently. So, Kim, if we 
recommended going forth and looking for more architects and doing a new RFP and therefore expending another six to nine thousand dollars does that need to go through the selectmen first any idea how long that might take How long would that take? I didn't hear uh, the that. The response was the Board of Selectmen meet on the 22nd of this month. That's their next scheduled okay. meeting. Bouncing off of what Ashley had recommended, instead of asking the architecture firms to come and give what will likely be in Phil's assessment, which I think he's right, a very solid presentation, what about reaching out to some of the references instead of the architecture firms from these studies. What does the committee think of that? It's probably a better use of time. Yep. We could even consider putting together subgroups of this group to go to them. Um, instead of asking them to take their time to us, we could go tour their facility, yeah. talk to their chief, you know, two or three of us at a time, with chief being part of every group. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, one thing that I guess I would recommend is, is if, if you were going to do that, and certainly this is open for discussion, coming up with some, um, some consistent points that you would like each. So if Absolutely. three of you tour station A and three of you tour station B, making sure that everyone's hitting on the same points so that it's more apples to apples and yep. not a difference. And I think to remember also that, well, there, there are... There are multiple pieces that go into this puzzle, but two main groups, the user group, but also the sort of construction finance, the, the people who get it built kind of group, uh, and that we may be less concerned with their ability to design a shiny new station than we are with their ability to mediate the issues. Uh, you know, where the cells go is not as important at this stage of the design. That will come out later. Uh, but the ability to get to the bottom of some of these issues is really what this initial study has to accomplish. Or we're just going to be back here again later. Do we know of some towns that have been renovated versus brand new builds? It looked like in one of those um, proposals, Grantham's, was in there and when I looked at the building it is an older building that it looks like they remodeled that to me if I'm remembering correctly was the only remodel okay I think all of them the majority of them were shiny new yep. buildings I think it would be important to see both just yeah mm -hmm. there might have been other retrofitted buildings but yeah. Grantham definitely stuck out because part of this exercise for me too would be to see see what shiny new looks like, see what renovated looks like <laughs> compared to our less shiny. <laughs> and I believe that this good, I think it's something Goodrow, it's a hyphenated name. They did both Tilton and I believe they're doing the city of Concord's new station now. Uh, and the city of Concord bought, I think it was an insurance building. So they're doing a, a renovation, different scale clearly and different type of building, but uh, they, they've got their fingers into it anyway. So if that's it seems to me that that's kind of the direction the committee would like to go. So I, I would be happy to look through all three of these proposals and try to find communities that are similar in size, scope, capabilities of New London with the communication center as well, because that's a big piece of it, and try to fit in there brand new versus renovated. And working with uh, Tony on that one to, to make sure I'm hitting the right points and then come back to the committee and you all can decide who wants to be assigned to station A, station B, et cetera, if that makes sense. Okay. I'll have that done for the next meeting, which is the first Friday in June, I think. So how does this get to the selectmen and so forth? I don't think we're at the selectmen. Yeah, unless Bruce wants to speak to that, but I, I think, go ahead. 
I don't think this is really changing the scope. We're not asking for a new RFP at this point. We're just going to start interviewing. So I don't think this needs to go to the selectmen. Kim? So who's paying Tony? I think this is still within the scope of the work that Tony has already, that Colliers has already signed up for, unless I'm incorrect, Tony. No, it, it sounds like you're correct. If we're just evaluating and, and you all are taking tours, I don't expect that I'll be going up for tours and that kind of stuff. What I will do is kind of help prepare some questions with the chief so that you're looking at the same types of things at the various buildings. But in, unless this group says, hey, we want to re-edit the RFP and, and put it back out on the street, and Tony, you need to solicit you know, six or eight different firms and, and start this process over again, uh, then, then we're still within the realm of our initial contract. OK. So I'll gather a handful of um, stations that meet both new and renovated to the best I can that is most similar to New London. And I will also, um, depending on those, I can reach out to the police chiefs of those departments and see if they're going to be available for a tour and what their availability is. I'm sure they would make themselves available. If somebody called me to ask that, I'd make myself available. So um, I will try to do that and come up with a variety. And then you all can choose who would like to go where. Yeah, we'll take the rec van. Yeah. <laughs> My car is a lot more comfortable. We, maybe we can take the command one. <laughs> I, I do think that this, before this goes too far down that road, we need to establish a schedule because the one that's in the RFP is way out of date. Um, and I'm not hearing, or I haven't heard yet, a discussion about what our real target is for scheduling. I mean, I, I'm, I'm one that usually drives schedule. Uh, you know, it, time is money, time is schedule, time also generates confidence in, in the public that this group is moving forward efficiently. My time ultimately, though, is driven to support you all. If, if you all have a deadline, you want to have a designer on board. Uh, in, in three weeks, five weeks, eight weeks, whatever it is, I, I can update the schedule accordingly. Um, if you think you need a couple of weeks to do tours, get everybody back together at our next meeting, I, I don't know if that's pushing you too hard or, you know, first and third Fridays as we discussed, you know, uh, the 7th and then the 21st of June, you know, it seems to me like your tours could be conducted uh, certainly with an evaluation or some concession by the 21st of June. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. Yeah. I think the tours could be done quick. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think your tours can be, but how you catalog all that information, discuss it at our next meeting, what your thoughts and sights and views and good good news and bad news, and then on the 21st, you would either make a decision that you've seen enough about the three firms that you have, and then you're going to decide at that point to either pick one or throw the whole thing out and start over. I'm seeing head nods in the room here, Tony. I don't know if you can see the, the heads, but yes, unless someone wants to speak up and say something to the contrary, but okay. So in this item 1.1 of the designer selection meeting minutes, I'll put those dates in there so that everybody has it. You all will get your team together, small groups, reach out to uh, the projects that you want to visit and schedule those in the next two weeks. We'll talk about it on the 7th of June and 
be able to make some decisions by the 21st. Sounds reasonable. Okay. I will include that in the schedule uh, topic down below. Next item was budget and finance. I don't know that there's a lot to talk about there. Uh, we, we've discussed a few things about the budget, so I will go back and, and try to find and develop some cost information on temporary spaces for communication centers, what options might be. I would think the other thing that this group could do, because you know your town and your area a lot better than I do, you know, is there a potential lease space that you think locally would work? And, and so if we talk about renovation and we talk about having to temporarily locate police and comms for 14 months, you know, what are your thoughts on where that would be? So as a task item for you all, uh, just like we had a group think about which sites might be available, what spaces might be available in the community or nearby to the community that could work, that would be a good list to start considering. Chief, how do you feel about the old liquor store? It depends. Is there anything left in it? <laughs> <laughs> kidding just kidding um yeah i've never i don't know what it looks like inside there now i mean know it looked like before oh, go ahead adam my understanding is that they are not releasing it due to um substantial water leak issues in the ceiling that had ruined the product so <laughs> yeah feel right at home <laughs> just get a shower yeah. <laughs> and just on the broader issue of this budget and, and again realizing this was done in february i think before the scope of the of the task changed, but there's no information in here on renovations. They're all blank lines. Okay. Well, seeing that mm -hmm. it's 926, want to be mindful of folks' time. Mm -hmm. Are we almost wrapped up, Tony? Yes. Okay. Uh, we had some encouraging group comments at our last meeting that I'll close and delete out of there. Um, what to do with the existing facility and some other comments, but uh, let's, let's open it up if there's anything new in the next couple minutes. Yep, we've got a comment from Colin Beasley. Come on up here, you wanna take this? Thank you. Um, one was a comment that Adam might be able to, just further history, I believe the 40 space issue is associated with regulations on the size of the building. Is that part of the history of that? I believe that they yeah. did okay. base that on the, okay. the site plan requirements. for. So I don't think it was a PD requirement for 40. I think it was a function of the space that was being built that pushed the 40 spaces. Yes. Right? Correct. Okay. Four, just, four it's an important clarification. Yeah. And the other one, I think, is just a question for Kim. So if this committee is not responsible for what to do economically with the existing Buker, should the police station get relocated? Who is? Because it's the important variable. Thank you. Yeah, that's for the selectmen. And they are, it's on their agenda to think, to talk about it some more. And they have been. I think we're all set here in the room, in the room, Tony, unless you have anything further. I think I have my marching orders and we'll reconvene. <laughs> all right, great. Uh, one, 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 one last thing, Tony. Uh, I will be yes. remote next week. So uh, Kim says first come, first serve on the four people who can be remote. On the, the first Number meeting one. in June? Yes, Okay. next time, sorry. Okay. <laughs> first come, first serve. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we we are adjourned at nine twenty eight. Great. Everybody Thank you. have a great weekend. Bye bye.